Hello and welcome to another Vexcode VR Python tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at uh, loops and also if and else statements. So important parts of program control and program flow uh, control. Um, right, so I'm going to start off by getting into uh, the Python editor. So going to file and then new text project. So I'm now in Python mode. Uh, and I'm going to get a playground loaded up ready. Um, so I just hit playground here. Um, and we can pop that down out the way. So the parts of um, loops I'm going to cover will be for loops and while loops. And, and we'll also look at if, else if, and else uh, statements as well. So let's start with loops because we're going to actually use those in conjunction with the um, if and else statements later on. So we'll do loops first. And the first one I want to look at uh, is the for loop. So the for loop repeats the code that's inside the loop for a set number of iterations. Uh, so it's useful for a number of different things. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you how we're going to make the robot move in a square with uh, relatively few commands and using a for loop. Uh, to um, repeat the drive commands a number of times. Um, okay, so I'm just going to delete that uh, command that was in there by default and uh, and start from the beginning. So the first thing for a for loop is the word for. Uh, and what a for loop does is it counts a number of times around the loop. And so we're going to give it a arbitrary um, variable. I'm just going to call it i for this one. And then it's for in range. And then inside brackets here is the number of times that we want the loop to iterate. So I'm going to make the robot draw in a square. So I'm going to do this four times. Um, and then after the uh, close bracket, then we need a colon. Um, and then the code that comes after this is the things that we want to repeat. So if I press enter, now this is the important bit with Python. It's the indentation, so the tabs that um, let Python know what is inside a particular loop or part or structure or part of the program and what's outside of it. So in this case, you can see my cursor is currently level with the for loop. And so Python will see that this is actually outside the loop. So if I press tab, I move in and now any code that I write here until I go back to this level here, will be inside the loop. So this is where I want my instructions that are to be repeated four times. In this case, I'm just going to make the robot drive forward first. So drive train dot drive four forward. Uh, and let's say our square is going to have 800 millimeter sides. So 800 millimeters. And um, hopefully you've already seen the video that explains how the, the drive train uh, commands work. So I'm going to uh, not explain those as we go. Um, if you haven't already seen that video, skip back and watch the drivetrain tutorials. Um, and then after we've driven forward for 800 millimeters, we're going to turn. So drivetrain dot turn four, and um, it's going to be a square. So we want 90 degree turns. I'm going to turn right for 90 degrees. And you can see here that this line, this vertical line here, is indicating that the the lines. Uh, of code to the side of that are what it's considering to be inside this for loop. So if I did this, this one would be repeated four times. And then when those four uh, loops were complete, then it would come out and um, execute this line of code. That's not what I want. So I indent it. This now becomes part of the loop. And then what I'm going to do right at the end is back here, so at the same level of the for loop and therefore outside of the loop, I'm just going to make the robot spin around 360 degrees. And we're going to use that to, sh to tell us that the, uh, that the loop is complete. So let's do a left spin for 360 degrees. OK, uh, let's expand that. So we've got a bit of a bigger playground. Um, so now when I run this code, what's going to happen is that for four iterations, we're going to drive forward and turn right. So there's the first drive forward and turn right. That's one iteration. Another drive forward, 
and turn right. That's the second iteration. Remember, we've got to get to four. And then we've got to the end, so we're outside the loop, and now we're doing the left spin 360 degrees. That's the last command. So you can change these variables, um, and you can uh, you can play around with what you're actually going to do inside the loop. But the purpose in the for loop is to iterate a piece of code a certain number of times. So just repeat it. Uh, sort of, um, you're going to uh, repeat that code for a certain number of iterations that are defined by this statement. Um, so that is the for loop. Now let's take a look at the uh, while loop. So a while loop is slightly different um, in that it will repeat the code inside the loop whilst the condition of the loop is true. Um, so let's have a look at what I mean by that. So what I'm going to use uh, for the example is I'm going to read some data from a sensor. Uh, in this case the distance sensor. And I want the robot to drive forward drawing a dotted line um, until it gets to 400 millimeters from the end um, of the playground. So my condition is while um, uh, what's the command for the distance sensor? Let's just have a look in the uh, toolbox here. Uh, distance dot get distance underscore millimeters. So while distance dot get underscore distance in millimeters is greater than 400 so that's my condition and I put a colon there to show that's the end of uh, the condition for the loop so while distance uh, dot get distance in millimeters is greater than 400 so basically what I'm what I'm saying there is whilst the robot is further away than 400 millimeters which is basically two lines from the end of the field then uh, let's do the things inside the loop uh, and I want to get it to draw a dotted line so to do that um, I'm going to use the uh, pen command so pen dot move down puts the pen down onto the canvas and then I'm going to drive forwards I'm going to use the drive for because I want to go forwards um, say a specific distance so I'm going to say 50 millimeters so drive forward 50 millimeters then I'm going to lift the pen up. And then drive forward another 50 millimeters. And now it's always good practice in a uh, a loop that's repeating um, a lot of times, um, it's always good practice to put a, a little weight in here. Now Vexcode VR will warn you if you need one and technically speaking in this case we don't need one. And the reason we don't need one here is because that these commands, these blocking commands, will take some time to um, to execute anyway. So the, as the loop comes down, it's going to move the pen, which is going to take a short amount of time. It's going to drive forwards for 50 millimeters, which is going to take a short amount of time. Move the pen up, and then drive forward for another 50 millimeters. All of that will actually take in the in the con in the sort of constraints of a loop. It's going to take um, a f enough time to, for us to not worry about it. If we were just incrementing a variable, just adding one to a variable every time, it's going to happen so fast that it's going to um, going to basically hog the processor and tie up everything else uh, and, and not allow us to do anything else. So you would always put a very short uh, wait and it would be like in a few milliseconds, five milliseconds. So in this case we could put wait um, five msec. And it's good just to get in the habit of doing this, um, even though in this case we don't do it. If it's a circumstance where you did need it and you'd forgotten to do it, um, Vexcode VR will warn you um, that you need to, to do that. Okay, so a little, uh, little recap on what we have um, in our code. So the while loop, um, this means that the code within the loop will be executed while this statement is true. So in this case, while it's greater than 400 uh, millimeters from the end of the playground and we start at 1845 millimeters 400 is going to be two lines away from the edge and that's when it's going to, to stop and whilst it's uh, 
um, inside this loop, it's going to move the pen down, drive forward for 50 millimeters, so drawing a 50 mil line, lift the pen up, and then drive forward another 50 mil, leaving a 50 mil gap in the line, and then repeat again and repeat and repeat until we get to here. So let's give that a go. And I've got an error here, so let's go and find out um, what the error is in my code. I can already actually see it in my code, um, and it's on. Uh, it's saying it's on line seven here, but actually, um, the issue I've got is uh, the fact that I've got a double bracket here. You can see I've um, been typing away whilst the autocomplete has also added a bracket in. So that's something you might need to watch out for, um, and I just need to delete that bracket there. And now we're off. So we are drawing the dotted line, so we're in the while loop at the moment, going round and round and round and round here. And then when we've got to this line, uh, which is the 400 millimeter mark, um, then the robot has stopped. Um, now we haven't given it a stop command. All it's doing is, because these are, remember these drive four commands here are for a specific distance. They're specifically for 50 millimeters. Um, and so therefore we didn't need to give it a stop command outside the loop. So the while loop, really, really useful, uh, and we're going to use it again in the next example as well, but in a slightly different context. And so now we're going to use it uh, to demonstrate some if and else. So what's the purpose of if um, and else? Well, actually, we have three parts to this structure. It's is, yeah, sorry, if, else, if, and else. It's a control statement that executes a, a command if specific um, conditions are true, but it's not a loop. So, I'm going to, uh, on this example, I'm going to read data um, from the bumper switches. Now, the um, robot has two bumper switches, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side that can detect when it's physically collided with an object. And what I'm going to do is write a program so that when the left button is uh, pressed, the robot assumes that there's an object to the left that it's collided in, so therefore it will turn ever so slightly to the right to carry on, and if the right one's pressed, then um, we'll turn to the left to drive away from that object. And we have a third condition which is neither pressed and therefore it hasn't collided with anything, in which case we're just going to drive straight forwards. Now, what I do need to do is I need to be continually evaluating those uh, those criteria. Is the left button pressed? Is the right button pressed? Um, and if not, uh, then drive straight forwards. So I'm going to have to put this inside a loop so that they're continually pressed. And I want, in the case of this program, I want it to evaluate that condition forever. So I'm going to use what's called while true. So while true, like this. So basically what that means, as I said earlier, a while loop will repeat the code that's inside the loop while the condition um, that you've given it is true. So in our distance uh, example, it was while the robot was further than a certain distance away from the wall. If we just tell it true, that condition is always true. So basically that's an infinite loop. It will loop forever until we stop the program. I need to remember now to indent from my commands um, to, show the, uh, to show Python that the next command is inside this loop. And I'm going to say if, and then I need to give it uh, a condition. So the condition here is going to be if the left bumper is pressed. So if left underscore bumper dot pressed, and then we have an open and a close bracket after that. So if it's pressed, now I need a colon there to show, I'm going to move down into my if statement. And again, I need to indent to show Python that the next line of code is what should be executed if this is true. Um, so I uh, bumped into something on the left hand side. The first thing I'm going to do is just reverse up a tiny bit to get clear of the object before I um, try and turn away from it. So drive train dot drive four reverse and doesn't need to be a great amount. I'm just going to do 100 millimeters. Like so, and then because I've bumped into something on the left hand side of the robot, to turn away from that, I'm going to turn right. So I'm going to uh, make sure I'm indented to the right amount here. So level with this command uh, drivetrain dot turn four. Uh, I need to turn right. And I'm going to turn 45 degrees. So that's uh, if the right button, uh, the so the left bumper is pressed. Now I'm going to have uh, 
an else if, and in Python that is elif, like this. Um, so this is something else that we are uh, checking to see is uh, if it is true or not. And in this case, I'm going to check if the right bumper is pressed. So right underscore bumper pressed. Uh, colon at the end there to show that's the end of my um, uh, criteria for the else if. And then I need to tab in again to show that the next piece of code is going to be inside the else if. Uh, and I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to turn left rather than right. So uh, drive train uh, dot drive four. Going to reverse up a little bit first. So what did we do before? 100 mils. So we'll do the same. And then we need to turn to the left. So drive train dot turn four left. 45 degrees and then the final thing is anything else if anything else is true so you could continue with more elifs at this point if there was other things you wanted to evaluate if there was more buttons on the robot for example to to check to see if they were pressed um, but in this case there isn't we've only got the two buttons they're going to evaluate and so we're going to use else so this means anything else that isn't either the left button pressed or the right button pressed and in this case it's going to be no buttons are pressed and in that case we just want to drive forward not a specific amount just forever until one of those buttons is pressed so drivetrain dot drive uh, so drivetrain not drive drivetrain dot drive forward And in this case, so when I was mentioning earlier about the weight, it's very, very important here um, to put the weight in. Because if this condition or this condition is true, the left bumper is pressed or the right bumper is pressed, we've got commands here that take up time, reversing 100 millimeters and turning 45 degrees. That takes a lot of time, um, and so it's not an issue. But this command takes no time to execute because it's not for a specific amount of distance or time or anything like that and so in the conditions when neither of these buttons are pressed that loop is going to be going around so fast um, that it's going to uh, tie up our processor and, and cause us too many problems now I'm going to try and run it actually without um, let me just shrink my playground a sec I'm going to try and run it without the uh, waiting just so you can see what happens so if I run that there we go it's popped up with an error to say hey look um, you've got a, a loop without a wait statement at at least a one millisecond wait um, to resolve the issue. So uh, it's not letting you um, tie up your uh, your processor and, and, and it would actually make the playground run very slow if we didn't do this. So what I'm going to do is at this level here wait okay, five milliseconds will be fine. So five m sec um, so it's uh, it's inside the loop. So each time it comes uh, around the loop, uh, we just get a little five millisecond wait um, just to, to yield the processor a bit. Okay, let's give that a go. All right, off goes the robot. Now, as it bumps square into the wall, um, I mean, I guess both are pressed at the same time, but one's going to be pressed before the other. So there we go. There's the left one being pressed. Um, and so we're turning to the right. And again here, I think the left will probably get preference there but you can see now the robot's just going to bump around the field uh, around the playground forever and ever um, checking for these inputs and deciding which way to turn so that is your if else if and else statements now of course if this wasn't in a loop just uh, to explain why we put that in the uh, why we put it in the while loop if this wasn't inside the loop these conditions would be evaluated once very very quickly at the start of the program and then never again um, which uh, would then mean that we're, we're never checking again to see if the buttons are pressed and I guess the robot would just continue uh, to drive forwards forever and then just crash into the wall so that's why we have the while true loop just so that these things are continually evaluated and it's an infinite loop so it will go on forever until we specifically stop the program